The SCP Foundation has encountered and contained some of the most fearsome entities in human history, and even some from long before us shaved apes were ever walking across the Earth. They've gotten their hands on ancient gods, humanoid creatures with deadly powers, and more than one item with the capacity to bring about the end of the world as we know it. But not everything at the SCP Foundation can kill you or would even want to. Sometimes an SCP has no agenda, other than going about their lives, making friends, or even helping people. Instead of wanting to eat you for dinner, these entities would rather sit down for a meal and a chat with you. No apocalyptic ambitions here, just good vibes. Today, we're taking a look at some of the friendliest SCPs of all time. First off is an SCP that's just as sweet as it is sad. If you ever encounter SCP-4999, you probably don't have long left to live. That's not because it's going to kill you or even hurt you, but because 4999 visits people who are already at death's door. Manifesting as a humanoid figure dressed in dark clothing, SCP-4999 appears to a person about 20 minutes before their death, as long as the subject is awake and alone. It will then sit down near their bed and offer them a cigarette. It will then light one for itself and, as it smokes, hold the dying person's hand or place a comforting hand on their shoulder. It will stay there with them, providing a silent sense of peace until they have slipped away. It may not be friendly in the most traditional sense, but SCP-4999 displays a great deal of kindness and compassion in making sure that no one ever dies alone. Though some of the friendliest SCPs are serious, others are quite silly. This is the case for SCP-2991. The entity is a striped, multicolored scarf capable of changing lengths. The scarf appears to be sentient and behaves in a docile manner, communicating by forming itself into the shape of letters and spelling out words. The scarf enjoys attention and becomes bored if left in its containment box for too long, and has expressed a desire to play. When asked if it was made to be fun, the scarf responded, yes, and then wrapped itself around the interviewer's hand and then went to sleep. It does not seem to have any interests other than playing and spending time wrapped around people, keeping them warm and cozy. It's basically just an ordinary scarf, except it's able to move on its own and desires the company of humans. Sounds pretty darn friendly to us. Some SCPs are perfectly nice, friendly people who have no control over their own anomalous properties, and would probably prefer just to live out a mundane existence free from any unusual activity. Unfortunately, you don't always get what you want, and neither does SCP-507. 507 is, for all intents and purposes, an ordinary human man with one notable exception. Against his will, he routinely finds himself teleported into alternate dimensions, appearing in them and returning to his original one seemingly at random. Aside from these odd, stressful occurrences, 507 is a jovial individual who enjoys meeting other SCPs and chatting with researchers at the Foundation about the paranormal. Aside from his dimension hopping, he is no different from any pleasant stranger you might encounter on the street. While some entities like 507 behave like a neighbor to the SCP Foundation, others like SCP-131 are more like house pets. SCP-131 refers to a pair of creatures nicknamed the iPods, two teardrop-shaped creatures about one foot high, one orange and one yellow, with a single blue eye in the middle of each of their bodies. Their intelligence has been compared to common house cats, and they are very curious, loving to roll around the facility and see what everyone is getting up to. They appreciate attention and affection, and seek more of it from those who they bond to, following them around like a lost puppy. They may look strange at first, but their behavior is downright adorable. And as you may know from some of our other videos, when certain deadly anomalies like SCP-173 escape, they can storm in and save lives. So they're not only adorable, they're adorable heroes. Sometimes an SCP with the best of intentions can cause harm to Foundation personnel without meaning to. This was the case for SCP-2337, a male corncrake bird capable of vocalizations loud enough to cause permanent hearing damage. Though he possesses this ability, he has never used it to cause deliberate harm while in Foundation custody. Instead, he simply wants to chat with the personnel, speaking in a language similar to English. The bird, which responds to the name Dr. Spanko, is very cooperative and always excited to speak with research staff. 
especially delighted when called by his name. He may be a bit loud from time to time, but who isn't? He's not malicious, just enthusiastic. Sometimes an SCP's good intentions are not misinterpreted or inadvertently harmful, but simply as helpful as they were meant to be. Enter SCP-662, a small silver handbell that, when shaken, summons a short, well-dressed, classic British butler named Mr. Deeds. Mr. Deeds will address the ringer of the bell by their name and title, and perform tasks for them. He is extremely polite, and even when given a task that he does not wish to or is unable to complete, he declines with the utmost respect. His style of friendliness may be more formal, but he's good company just the same. And we've heard he mixes a mean, or in this instance, a nice drink too. Many of the nicest SCPs to be around are similar to pets, but very few were deliberately intended to live in one's home as a companion. SCP-111 is an exception. 111 refers to a species of invertebrates resembling snails, also referred to as dragon snails. Unlike ordinary snails, these creatures are warm-blooded, highly intelligent, and capable of breathing fire. Though they should be handled with care, hatchlings are capable of imprinting on their owners much like other baby animals, and likely would make a lovely pet for a fireproofed household. Unfortunately, they are all in Foundation custody, so there is no way to find out for yourself. Some of the previous SCPs in this video are similar to ordinary pets, but SCP-529 actually is an ordinary pet, with one small anomalous change. SCP-529, or Josie, is a small house cat with gray tabby markings, and only half of a body. Don't get upset, she is not injured or in any pain. For some reason, the rear end of her body, from tail to the bottom of her ribcage, is simply not there. The place where the cat's body ends appears as pure black to the naked eye, and absorbs light. The area does not appear to be invisible, but it is simply not there. In spite of this, Josie experiences no adverse effects, moving around as if the back half of her body were still there. There are no containment procedures in place for Josie, and she is allowed to freely roam the facility, purring, rubbing up against personnel's legs for attention, playing with balls of string and little mouse toys, and begging for pieces of cheese as a treat. Creatures like Josie the half-cat provide a morale boost to those that encounter them, but entities like SCP-5094 can provide material benefits to the lives of those they meet and help them to make a change for the better. SCP-5094, or Miss J, is the main character of a children's educational CD-ROM game called Miss J's WizKid Schoolhouse. Miss J, who is unable to leave the computer program, has only one interest, educating others. She can teach a given student about essentially any subject, including particle physics and cubist sculpture. She conducts her lessons over the course of several days, up to 30 hours in length, with breaks for meals and trips to the bathroom sprinkled throughout. Test subjects who studied with Miss J have described her as the best teacher they have ever had, and she helped a D-class leave the Foundation and begin a career studying criminal justice. She even recognized a former student, now a junior researcher at the Foundation, and expressed delight at seeing how far he had come since her first lesson with them. Many of the friendlier SCPs have a great deal of knowledge they are eager to share, and one of the most eager out there is SCP-1867, or Lord Theodore Thomas Blackwood. Lord Blackwood identifies himself as a British explorer and naturalist, as well as a war veteran which is a bit perplexing considering he is also a neon sea slug measuring only 4.6 inches in length. In spite of this, he enjoys telling anyone who will listen the tales of his past expeditions, which he has been able to provide ample proof of. Lord Blackwood is happy to provide entertainment and engaging tales of adventure to anyone who would like to take a listen to the stories of a sea slug. If you're interested in the company of Lord Blackwood because of a fondness for stories, then you'll also want to hear about SCP-1230. 1230 is a simple, unlabeled, green hardcover book, with nothing strange about it at first glance. When it is opened, the phrase, A Hero is Born, can be seen on the first page the reader looks at, and the rest of the pages will appear to be blank. The true anomalous effects of the book do not kick in until the reader goes to sleep. There they will find themselves in a fantastical world as the protagonist of their own adventure story. The dream world feels real, as real as the waking world, and the story is tailored to the interests of the reader. 
In the dreams, a bearded man in a green cloak appears, known as the Bookkeeper, and acting as the voice of SCP-1230. He is helpful and kind, providing guidance to the dreamers and attempting to ensure that they have a wonderful time in their dream. Just before the dreamer wakes up, the man bids them a sorrowful farewell and asks that they please visit again soon. It seems that the book and its keeper want nothing more than to give readers an incredible experience and the chance to live out their wildest dreams as the hero of their own story. Speaking of objects that help people fulfill their dreams, SCP-2203 devotes itself to fulfilling romantic dreams in the waking world. 2203 is a standard love tester machine which, upon use, dispenses a card with the name and address of a person, as well as a bit of advice of how to approach them. This person is intended to be the soulmate of the subject, and when the subject approaches their chosen person, they find that there is an immediate spark. Test subjects who sought out their assigned person have found either a spouse, a lover, or a lifelong best friend. It refuses to suggest matches to individuals with a history of domestic violence, indicating that its intention is to only make matches that will be happy, healthy, and safe. Many of these friendly SCPs display a strong desire to help others however they can. Few show this desire more strongly than SCP-2295. 2295 is a patchwork stuffed teddy bear made from synthetic fiber and cotton. When it is near a human who has experienced major trauma to an organ, the bear becomes active. It will produce scissors, white thread, and sewing needles or a crochet hook, and create a stuffed version of the ailing organ. The damaged organ will somehow be replaced with this new creation. It sounds as if this is the start of a horrifying story, but it isn't. The stuffed organ will function perfectly, defying all known laws of medicine and science. The bear wants to help so badly that if there are no useful materials nearby, it will use stuffing and fabric from its own body to construct these organs. When the bear is unable to help a subject, it will do whatever it can to cheer them up and make them happy and has even been known to hold the subject and cry if there is nothing else it can do. Above all, the bear simply wants to help heal the hurt and the sick. Without a doubt, though, the friendliest SCP that the Foundation has ever encountered is SCP-999, also known as the Tickle Monster. 999 is a large mass of orange slime that wants nothing more than to play, socialize, and make people happy. Its behavior has been compared to that of a dog, enjoying the company of humans and other creatures. Just touching its slimy surface is enough to boost a person's mood, and the creature expresses special interest in people who are unhappy or suffering from emotional pain. It refuses to eat meat and goes out of its way to prevent any harm to those around it, even taking a bullet for a person to save their life. 999 is such a delight to be around that it even managed to make the omnicidal rage of SCP-682 subside, if only for a moment. Dogs might be considered man's best friend, but SCP-999 is giving them some fierce competition for the role, though it would probably want to be best friends with a dog, too. And hey, if you want your own SCP-999 to cuddle, make sure to check out scpswag.com to pick up a Tickle Monster plush. It's the next best thing to having your very own SCP-999 to cuddle whenever you need a little pick-me-up. Now go check out SCP-5031 Yet Another Murder Monster and SCP-999 and the most wholesome SCPs for more SCPs that'll warm your heart and put a smile on your face.